Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today I'm reviewing a brand new model of pen from a classic fountain pen company with which I've had a love-hate relationship, and that is Schaefer. Schaefer, along with Parker and Waterman, has been one of the major innovators of fountain pens since the early 20th century. Over the last 109 years, Schaefer has created some of the most iconic fountain pens in history, including the Schaefer Balance, Triumph, Imperial, PFM, Legacy, Targa, and the pen familiar to many who grew up with fountain pens in school, the Schaefer Student Pen. Schaefer was founded by Walter Schaefer in Fort Madison, Iowa in 1913. Bought by Bic in 1997, Schaefer moved its U.S. manufacturing to China in 2008 and was subsequently bought in August 2014 by the A.T. Cross Company, which also manufactures most of its fountain pens in China. Some say post-Bic Schaefer's are not real Schaefer's anymore, and they're right, they aren't. But are all modern Schaefer fountain pens awful now? I know my Schaefer VFM, which actually stands for value for money, yeah, is probably the most execrable fountain pen I've ever used. Cool. This coffee smells like shit. It is shit, Austin. Oh good, then it's not just me. <laughs> but the Schaefer Pop isn't an awful pen. And I was able to review a new Schaefer Tyrannus Ferrari edition a while back that was pretty cool. Just because it's made in China doesn't mean it's awful. It all depends on how much attention to design, engineering, and quality control is taken by the parent company. So when I saw the release of a new Schaefer fountain pen called the Icon, I pounced on it and ordered one through my favorite brick and mortar pen shop, Reed Stationers in Calgary. Carrie quickly ordered three of the available five color options from which I could choose. I chose the cool looking black with red accents. So let's take a look at this new model from an old classic fountain pen company right now. <laughs> I just got back from my favorite brick and mortar pen shop, Reed Stationers on 17th Avenue in Calgary, because they informed me that a pen I ordered was in. So I went down to pick it up. And that pen is a new Schaefer, something new from Schaefer. It is called the Schaefer Icon. And when this first came out, I saw it, I think on Facebook. I called Carrie at Reed's and asked her about the Schaefer Icon and uh, she hadn't heard of it before but put in an order for me and uh, bought some for the store as well. I did review a Schaefer Tyrannus for a friend uh, about a year and a half ago or so and that was an interesting pen but I was expecting some kind of uh, rebranded Chinese uh, plasticky kind of a thing and um, let's see what we get. It's in this Schaefer box with a sleeve and it says it's a Schaefer icon. So let's take this sleeve off and we have a nice cardboard box with the Schaefer and the white dot established 1913. But of course when you look on the back of the box you see it's made in China. That could be good, that could be bad. We don't know. Let's take the top off and we have a little plastic top to that and there's the pen. Well, let's take the pen out for a second and here's our use and care guide a couple of Schaefer cartridges one in black one in blue and our use and care lifetime warranty that's what the white dot used to mean was a lifetime warranty so a refilling guide and of course Schaefer is now owned by the AT Cross Company so that's nice to know it's a lifetime warranty and let's look at the fountain pen so when I first picked this pen up in the store I was immediately struck by the heft of the pen and the solid nature of the pen I was expecting something Chinese and cheap and what I've got is yes it's a lacquered metal pen so it does have some weight to it but everything about it from the outside seems to be well made and it's got a nice girth to it. I also mentioned that I uh, reviewed the Tyrannus uh, about a year and a half ago. A friend sent it to me for review and uh, 
that was Ferrari red version and uh, very very nicely styled but this one's a lot thicker a lot girthier so it is a pop top and it is a positive click which is really really nice and when you take it off here's another nice design feature look at that nice red stripe on that tapering uh, black plastic section what we're going to do is we're going to clean this out and I was thinking also just as I was unboxing this that I don't have a pen with red ink in it I have brown ink I have reddish brown ink um, I have a lot of black ink and I, so I was thinking I was going to put Hiroshizuku Takisumi my favorite black ink into this pen but then I thought well I don't have a red pen I do have some really red red and that's this noodlers Widowmaker. with the amount of money that I'm spending on pens lately I think maybe I should have some red ink to do my budgets what do you think and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen as I said in my introduction Reed's brought in three of the five available colors for me to choose from I took a couple of photos of the other two colors the green and black the dark blue and black and of course I chose the matte black with these red accents I have to say even after the rather hefty price tag of $120 Canadian I was fully expecting to find a cheaply made Chinese fountain pen I mentioned to the salesperson that this pen was made in China and she said that she was sure they were made in Slovakia and I'm afraid she's incorrect distribution quality control customer service warehousing and packaging are done in Slovenia but the manufacturing is done by a Chinese OEM pen manufacturer the box has made in China on the back and the cartridges are marked Slovenia Schaefer's head office is in Shelton Connecticut but this is a completely Chinese made pen I expect the design is done by divisions within the AT cross corporation and the design is wonderful when I first held this pen I was immediately impressed by how it felt in the hand and how well put together the pen is it opens and closes with a positive click and it posts beautifully I think the thing that impressed me most was how the girth and the shape of this pen reminded me of the Schaefer Legacy 2 that I was able to borrow from Jack Hernandez for a couple of months that Schaefer pen from the late 1990s was one of the best writing experiences I've ever had and this new icon has some of that same feel plus the look is reminiscent of the Schaefer Tyrannus with this cool red racing stripe the one thing I didn't like so much about the Tyrannus was that it was built a little too slim for me but this pen feels and looks awesome so let's take a closer look at it overall the pen is cigar shaped and is finished with a matte black enamel over brass with gloss black enamel hardware the cap has a silhouette similar in shape to the cross Townsend and since cross has been making a killing off of their Townsend Star Wars models like the Chewbacca the C-3PO the Darth Vader and the Stormtrooper it might behoove Cross slash Schaefer to repackage this black and red icon as the Star Wars Darth Maul every choice you have made has led you to this moment there's my two cents from the top we see a shiny black enameled metal clip that extends over the top of the finial with what looks like a rivet on the very top that holds it in place and looking over the back we see how it extends about two centimeters down the back side of the cap and has a Schaefer applied in what looks like black powder coat on top of the shiny black enamel there it is right there Schaefer this is just gloriously subtle and I love it but the wrapped over the top pen design of the clip is not only cool looking but it's also very functional as this clip is beautifully springy and on the front of the clip we have the classic Schaefer lifetime warranty white dot and a thin inlaid channel with red enamel paint 
it's very sharp the cap tapers up quickly and then is straight until we get to the gloss black enameled cap band that has two grooves in it and a center band of sparkly metallic red enamel the red accents against this matte black pen are quite striking i love it there's a very slight step down to the barrel which is straight almost to the end where it begins to taper quite quickly to a rounded end the cap snaps off to reveal a long tapering shiny black plastic section with a very attractive red strip of the same sparkly metallic red enamel paint as that was on the cap band and has Schaefer written in negative space in black the end of the section has an elegant chamfer cut and a semi hooded medium steel nib the section is smooth and comfortable in the hand as your grip can be almost anywhere let's take a closer look at this nib this is a Parker 51 style nib and feed system it is Chinese and precisely the same size nib and feed as the Wing Sung 601 and 618 the Jin Hao 51a and 85 and pretty much all of the hero hooded nib models I know this because this isn't the Schaefer icon nib you're seeing here this is the Schaefer nib I pulled it and replaced it with this Bobby bent nib I'll explain this in the writing sample and you'll notice that it has an M marked on it for medium the section unscrews to reveal another wonderful surprise from Schaefer and included Schaefer cartridge converter this is awesome many pens in this price range and even some more expensive pens force you to purchase the company's proprietary converter for extra money this pen is already at the top end of what I would consider reasonable and to require an extra purchase of say 20 bucks on top of that for the converter would have really boiled my cabbage Mini -me. Oh, blimey. I thought I smelled cabbage. are you listening platinum no of course you're not so I'm really pleased to see this we see the metal nozzle uh, threads of the section which uh, thread into the barrel and on the end of the barrel you can see that that's enamel over brass right there and the inside of the cap shows a plastic cap liner that seals the nib the cap posts deeply and securely and this is another wonderful and impressive feature of this pen look how deeply and beautifully it posts and I'm thrilled with how it balances in the hand when posted just look at this beautiful pen this is how a well-designed pen posts are you listening Parker because you designed probably the best posting pen in history and then when reinventing your Parker 51 you came up with this I mean what the hell is that what the hell's that Parker someone at Schaefer slash cross knows what they're doing to a point I have a huge caveat coming up unposted the pen is still plenty long enough to write with comfortably the pen is substantial in the hand it's not heavy even though it weighs in at a full 43 grams but it feels substantial so 43 grams sounds heavy and it is but it's all in how that weight is distributed and the way this pen balances makes the pen feel very comfortable and yet hefty at the same time and let's talk about aesthetics uh, with the pen posted how beautiful is the design of this pen in the hand when it is posted just some really lovely lines and curves beautiful full marks to the icon design team I bought this pen from Reed stationers in Calgary for $120 Canadian which is around $95 US depending on which foreign exchange crook you use a week later they come back said the check had bounced and that I had to see Doug 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 it's available in five finishes black with red green with black blue with black red with black and polished chrome with black and red accents it's also available as a ballpoint and a roller ball now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the Schaefer icon with a platinum plaisir a cross calais a faber castell loom and a parker sonnet now let's look at them posted and here they are posted 
they all post rather deeply and securely. Uh, the sonnet and the icon seem to be the best at it. The loom isn't bad, but that cap is a little back-weighted. But the cross, that's not secure at all, and that uh, shiny chrome cap falls off uh, when you least expect it. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, and this is the Schaefer icon. And this is not the original nib, as I replaced it with a Bobby bent nib. Which is actually like a mini fude nib. So yes, I replaced the nib, but never fear. I have the writing sample I did immediately after inking this pen. And here it is. You see I'm using Noodler's Widowmaker red ink. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. I'm finding the ink a little dry and probably more red than I care for. So I might be swapping it out for Dimene Oxblood soon. As you can see from my writing samples here, this nib that is marked with an M for medium is very, very far from being medium in any part of the world. This is an extra fine nib, and it measures out at 0.3 millimeters, which is an extra, extra fine by Western nib standards, and a Japanese extra fine to fine. The nib had a lot of feedback to the point it felt a bit scratchy and was very, very stiff. A classic Chinese steel hooded nib. I'm stumped by how this extra fine nib could be stamped medium at all. I knew I couldn't write with this nib, so I pulled it out and put in a Bobby Bent nib. I have Bobby Bent nibs in some of my very favorite pens, including my Wingsong 601 Flighter and my Moonman TI-200 Titanium. And this is how I pulled the nib on this pen. And look away if you were at all squeamish. What's that? That whirly thing coming through his stomach. What is it? I don't look. It's only a hose. It's for you. Who is it? The gardener. I didn't even attempt to get this hood off. There's no way I would want to damage this beautiful $120 pen. But the nib is the cheapest part of this pen, so more on that later. I took my toenail clippers and placed a small bit of rubber elastic over the nib. I took my clippers and put them on the nib so that it was oriented like this and clamped down lightly and just pulled straight out. And then I took the pulled nib and slipped it onto that feed until I could push it no more, set it down, on a soft surface and pushed it the rest of the way down against that piece of a rubber elastic. It took about 15 seconds. Presto changeo. Presto! Well, I'm getting close. So let's continue with the writing sample. Of course, this ink is Noodler's Widowmaker. And now, this pen is very nice and wet, and I'm getting some really nice line variation out of this. A thin vertical stroke and a thick horizontal stroke, which gives you instant line variation without any pressure. It is still very stiff. Hey, phrasing! Because it is Chinese steel. So by pushing it, you're not going to get anything out of it. Very, very stiff. You really need to talk about getting phrasing back in the rotation. But it's very smooth. Unlike the original nib. And there's a ton of character in this nib. And they're just a joy to write with. The vertical line 
here is 0.3 millimeters. So the size of the original nib. And the horizontal stroke gives you 0.5 millimeters, which makes it go from an extra, extra fine to a fine western and an extra fine to a fine Japanese. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. And it's a little bit more scratchy, but and a lot drier, but very, very fine now. And it started to dry up. And some quick writing. feed is keeping up very nicely although the ink itself feels a bit dry so what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen well there's only one thing I dislike about this pen and that is the nib not this one that one it is scratchy and not even close to being the medium nib as advertised and it is a typical inexpensive stiff steel Chinese nib the pen itself is wonderful I love the design the color combinations the balance and the weight, the sleek lines, and especially the way it feels in my hand, posted and unposted, but especially posted. This pen caps and uncaps beautifully and posts as nicely as the classic Parker 51. It's a bit pricey for a Chinese-made non-gold nibbed pen at $120 Canadian, but I'll overlook that because of the excellent attention to form and function. In other words, excellent design and engineering except for the nib if i had to live with the original nib i would be returning this pen to reeds for a full refund however the easy way in which i was able to pull the nib and replace it with a nib that costs less than two dollars us to make this pen write beautifully with wet smooth lines that have lots of character redeems the entire pen in my mind and that also infuriates me and if I was part of the design team that created this beautiful pen, I'd be hopping mad as well. How dare Schaefer US or Schaefer Slovakia or Schaefer China allow this incredibly subpar nib to get anywhere near this fountain pen? Nibs fighting words. Uh, nibs fighting words. I blame Slovakia. No, they have it off. They have it off. They're not even a real country anyway because they are in charge of quality control. How does a pen marked with an M for medium on the nib and on the package get out of quality control writing a scratchy 0.3 millimeter line? If your Schaefer icon comes with a nib that writes the line thickness advertised and is smooth and wet out of the box, then you have a great pen on your hands. If you get one like this one, either send it back or do just what I did. Buy a pack of four Bobby Bent nibs for $7.50 US and slip this nib off and push that one on. I'd say it's worth it. I wouldn't worry about wrecking the nib. It's only 87 cents to replace and took me less than 15 seconds. And to cross slash Schaefer, you named one of your most classic and beautiful pens the PFM, Pen for Men. Then you named one of your most awful pens certainly in my mind, the VFM, or value for money. You should have named the PFM the PFA, pen for all, and the VFM the PFB, pen for bin, as this one belongs in the bin. Get out! And then I suggest you rename the icon the PFC, pen for crap, because with this nib, that's what it is. It makes the whole pen crap. You a crap! But I've made this into a PFD, a pen for Doug. Doug.
I've seen grown men pull their own heads off rather than see Dad. <laughs> Even Tinsdale was trying to duck. What did he do? He used sarcasm. By swapping the nib and making it now one of my favorite pens. So isn't it instructive to you how very important the nib is in the overall pen experience for fountain pen users? Maybe your next model will be the VIN, very important nib. That would be great. It is where the rubber hits the road, folks. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget that you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I will answer all your comments in the comment section, and you get cool emojis and badges too. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. Oh, this is nice. And that's all she wrote. I made this.